Oh, all right. These are traditional glazes that you have to put on the bisquare. Uh, we saw the dipped glazes yesterday, which those are really cool. Um, they're fun to get like a really nice solid color or an overlap. Um, these you could get more like technical with in where you place them. But the main thing I want to talk about is the colorings and how they change inside the kiln. So just looking at these two and this little camera I have here isn't the best. I think I'm gonna look into getting a new one. But this looks almost white, but it comes out blue. And this is like kind of gray green but it comes out this really pretty turquoise color. And most of these glazes um, that we have it in class change like that, just like dip glazes do. Now, uh, I'm gonna be actually taking your little uh, porcelain vases that we're working on and I'm gonna be dipping those in a clear coat so they'll be nice and shiny um, after you guys apply the under glaze onto them. The same thing goes for our next project. That's gonna be more of like a turquoise. The other two, you're gonna to have to glaze. I, either if you wanna come back and glaze, uh, I'm gonna do like little glaze workshops, just like, kinda of like sit, hang out after school for anyone that needs to glaze anything. Um, but we'll probably have to do like sign-ups. So I gave you guys two different under glazes. They may look very similar, but when they're fired, they're not as similar. Um, you could see that one is a little bit lighter than the other, but I labeled them. One is medium blue and the other one is electric blue. So I would kind of, you know, keep that in mind. I would put them on some type of palette. Literally, I'm just using this piece of cardboard. You guys can totally do that if you want. And I put an E and an M so I know what I'm using. I also posted in the class, please don't kick me out Google Classroom. I posted right in the main feed here uh, what they look like when they're fired. So applying a glaze over them and firing them to like a high temperature, um, they change colors. This is what the electric blue is going to look like. And then this is what the medium blue is gonna look like. They look very similar now because they're both a blue under glaze. Um, but I posted this so it's nice and easy just so you could see the colors. Now you can just use one if you want. Um, I think incorporating both, um, maybe getting some shading uh, on some of your pieces. I know all of you guys have really different designs, uh, but kind of sticking to the traditional uh, blue on white Chinese pottery. But that is right up there on the wall so you could go ahead and access that. I'm looking for these to be finished right before we leave for break so that you have like a nice relaxing break and then we'll come back and we'll start our next project. So this is just a little reference for while you're painting. Like I said, pour just a little bit out. Um, the electric blue is a little bit thinner. Um, I like it. I, I feel like, I don't know, sometimes as they age a little bit, they get a little bit more um, clumpier, but that's okay. We could water it down a little bit because essentially it's slip with colorant in it. Colorant pigment, pigment, pigment. So I'm gonna push that off the side. I gave you guys some brushes in your little kits too. If you did not yet pick them up, they are in a pink bin right where all the clay carts are and you could go ahead. There's a, um, larger container in there with black under glaze. That's for our first project when we get back from break. You should have two brushes in there. One's probably a little bit bigger than the other. I tried to give everyone like a little bit of variety in there. And I know I sent you home with a brush earlier in the year. You're gonna wanna have, like I said, a really nice bed for your vase. Um, I did post a video this morning on how to fix things if they break, but I really, really hope that doesn't happen. Take good care of it. Treat it like it's a nice, precious porcelain thing. Oh my goodness. So you're gonna have your underglaze. 
You're gonna want something for water uh, to thin out the medium blue a little bit and then also just to rinse your brushes. And of course you're gonna want your vase. Now I went in and I started to pre-draw out my designs on here. I started painting it with the underglaze during first block and I'm just going to kind of continue as we go um, through class but hopefully by tomorrow you guys have everything drawn out. I know most of you are finished with your vase. Uh, the black underglaze should be in the same bag but for this project you'll only need the blue ones. The other one, the other, okay. And the black is for our next project. So, what, what was I saying? Oh, okay. Water, got your underglaze, you got your vase, which you're going to be so careful with. And also keep them away when you're not working on them and when you're working on them from siblings and pets. And maybe even parents, I don't know. But as of now, siblings and pets are, are, are nemeses. So make sure you keep them nice and safe. Maybe when you're not working on them, you know, store them like this really nicely. Like put it in a box or something. I don't know. Or put it high up somewhere, you know, a little sibling can't reach because unfortunately I uh, in my first block class I had a girl and her little sister picked it up and just dropped it. So she's gonna make a, a new one because she, she wants her vase, but you know, it's sad. All right, so this is resting on here. And with the underglaze, you usually wanna do two to three coats. Uh, that being said, when you're doing smaller work, you could usually get away with just doing two and especially thin lines, just one. If you were painting the entire thing blue, you would definitely need three coats because you would see any of the little uh, brush marks that were on there. So I'm gonna first work with this medium blue or did I work with the electric blue? I don't, this vase has really been through it kids. But I'm going to go in with the medium blue just to show you um, the difference in it. Um, you could see it's a little clumpier. So if I were to just like take it on my paintbrush, it's, it's going to be messy. So go ahead, just add a little bit of water into it. Like, you know, not turning it into a watercolor. Uh, just enough so that you could easily get like a nice paint stroke. And it's not going to be like, oh, well, that was a nicer paint stroke. But hold on a minute. Like a glided one. And then this one. Well, my brush is wet. Okay, that looks good too. But don't use like a big old clumpy piece uh, of that. And then this electric blue I had out earlier, but you could see it's much more fluid. I'm gonna go in, I have these triangular shapes at the top and I'm gonna go in and do those first. Like I said, make sure you're really like holding this and make sure you have a little thing to rest it on. Be careful when you're painting these. We could always go in and like fix a little bit up, but you know, just be mindful. What I usually like to do is outline a shape if I have like specific geometric shapes like this and then go from the other direction because your thinner line is always gonna come from the opposite way. So if I was gonna paint like that, it would be thicker where my point is. So I wanna paint away from it. And then I could just go in and kind of fill that in. Now for me, I'm kind of considering this is like a bigger section. So I would do like a thicker coat on it or two coats if it's thin. And then just try to neaten it off at the top. I'm gonna go again just to kind of like reiterate. And this goes for any shape you're working with. Um, so I'll show you on a flower piece right after. 
You want to start because your thinnest line is going to be where it meets. And like I said, take your time on these. I know that it's really hard. I get a little shaky when I try to do thin lines. Drives me nuts. But um, take your time. These are little vases. Make sure that you get a nice overlap, nice clean lines. And like I said, for these sections, maybe, um, maybe two coats. And be mindful of what color you're using where, uh, because I wasn't, and when they dry, they look very similar. Don't do what Miss Clayton does a lot of the time, because when I'm demoing little things like this, I just keep, like, I, like, mess up sometimes on purpose, and then I throw it together, and, but the basics for painting, uh, your line work is gonna be like that. But you can see that as it dries, it looks very similar. And I think those were two different colors. No, it was the same color. It was. All right, not bad. I'm gonna then do these little raindrop looking things. And I'll just paint two of them. But the same type of way, I wanna go in and I wanna outline it, starting from the point. And for some of these, you could even kind of like, almost like stipple it in. But you could add a little bit of water if you can't get a clean line, that'll help you. The clay will soak that water right up. It's not gonna like drip on you or anything. So feel free if you need to spread it a little bit to add a little bit of water to it. And just be super delicate. Another thing to remember is, say you were drawing out your design and you made a mistake. You're not gonna be able to erase on the clay itself, but you could just choose not to paint that part. The graphite will all burn away. And you know, consider lots of detail on these. Um, the traditional uh, porcelain vases were very detailed, um, whether it be like geometric and floral patterns or working with dragons or birds or different types of sea creatures and things like that. Um, I know you guys all had really great drawings thinking back to when we sketched them. I can't think of everyone's off the top of my head. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna continue working on this larger flower. And I always like to start with the back petals and work my way up, especially when doing ceramics. Now, I started with a darker color and I have more of an organic shape, petal, kind of like, a, I guess like a poppy or something like that. And then some of my other ones are more exact and just kind of going in and getting a basic outline. I then went in and I used both colors to apply some shading. And I like using both of them to get a variety. You can mix them together to get a medium tone. Uh, I'm just using them as is. And I'm just kind of brushing them up in the direction that my flower is going to give it a little bit of value going in. I'm not sure. It's really hard to see on there. It's much easier to see on, on this little camera I'm, uh, I'm filming on, also known as my phone. Um, that way, now that I have some line work in here, I could go ahead and I could overlap that with my next little loop. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna overlap. And I'm just kind of making up shapes as I go a little bit on this. And this is kind of like my center part, but my outside sections, I'm gonna have a lot of different things going on. 
Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for my middle yet, but this flower kind of goes all the way around here. Um, moving on to some of this small line work. Very similar to how I went about doing the shapes. I'm going to pick a little bit of the underglaze up. Another reason it's also important to put just a little bit down on here is so you could remember to put the lids on your underglaze. And also, so you're not dipping your brush all the way in and getting a bunch on the metal part. You want to just dip like the little tip of the brush in. I want to start like I did originally, going from where I want it to be thinnest to where it's going to be thickest. So I'm going to start actually right back here going from one flower. So I'm starting my line. And eventually you're going to run out of paint. When that happens, rather than trying to meet up with the line exactly, start maybe about like two thirds, no, a third, I'm sorry, and then just kind of blend it in. So I made all these little kind of doodads on here. I'll probably go in and just finish this with a bunch of different example things and then demo dip glazing. Maybe we could watch, we could do that. We could do a class. You guys could see your pieces getting dipped in glaze. Maybe I'll make Mr. Daniels do it. I'll have to wax all the bottoms of those pots. And these were just little circular pieces. I'm just gonna kinda go in. I put a bit of glaze on and just made a circular motion. And the same thing, um, if you have any like small, small details, you could just kinda paint them in with like the smallest brush you have by using quite a bit of paint on your paintbrush. Like I'm just stippling these in, uh, kind of like I would with like pen and ink, like making like the little dots like that. And if you happen to make like any little mistake, um, you know, it's okay. You can always change your form a little bit. Um, another thing you could do um, is, hold on, let me see what I got around here. <laughs> what do I got? Oh, this will work. Another thing is, if you want to go in, say you don't like this little line right here, don't go in and scratch everything off your pot. That's not going to be good. You don't want to get all that clay dust in the air. Not good for your health. Um, so just a little piece. Say I was like, ooh, that line went in the wrong way. You could just go in and lightly scrape it because it's not fired yet. And you don't want to blow the dust up in the air, just kind of... And there, I removed the line. So I removed the line I didn't like. So you don't want to, you don't want to breathe in uh, clay dust. So make sure you're not like, you know, going in and scratching off the whole entire thing uh, and doing that and just little pieces if you need to. Um, you could kind of adjust things that way. So this is the basics to working with these underglazes. Um, anywhere from one to three coats, mostly three coats if you have like a larger section. Uh, if you guys have any questions about these, ask me. I'm here. Uh, this is what we're going to be working on tomorrow. I'm probably just going to be working on painting my piece. And then um, I'll have my remind on during class. And, and or if you guys even want to send me images of your drawings on your vases now. So that I could have them right on my phone. Um, that you know rather than going through sketches and everything that way if you feel like you need help on something I could help you like in class, but you know actually have it on my phone So yep, that's the basics of underglazing and we will continue this tomorrow